Assalamualaikum Ok so this is the last chapter In biology KSSM 5 Chapter 3 Genetic Genealogy So this is the video of subtopic uh, 13.1 Genetic Engineering Ok What is genetic engineering we Get to the picture uh, the, the GMO Uh, tomato and organic tomato so this is called genetic genetically modified organism so genetic engineering is a gene manipulation technique to modify an organism's genetic material to produce new combination of genes okay uh, kejuteraan genetik ni melibatkan manipulasi gene yeah, untuk mengubah uh, Genetik sesuatu organisma tu menghasilkan satu kombinasi jenis yang akan menghasilkan satu organisme yang baru. So, an organism such as animal, plant or microorganisms that is produced by recombinant, recombinant DNA technology is known as genetically modified organism or GMO. So, genetic engineering involves a transfer of a DNA segment from one organism to another by DNA recombinant technology. By using the techniques and procedure in the recombinant technology, the biologists can recombine uh, the DNA or genome. Uh, the genome is a complete set of DNA of an organism. Okay, jadi kejuteraan genetik ni akan melibatkan uh, pemindahan DNA okay, Segmen DNA dari satu organisma kepada organisma yang lain Menggunakan satu teknologi yang dikenali sebagai uh, rekombin, re, rekombinasi teknologi DNA So uh, this is the words, uh, the meaning of genome Okay, genome is a complete set of DNA of an organism that includes it, uh, all the genes of the organism. So the genome contains all information needed to build and carry out the life processes of an organism. So this is the uh, human genome. Okay, genome is one whole set of all your genes plus all the DNA between your genes. Okay, genetically modified organism GMO. Okay, so this is the example of GMO. Okay, this genetically modified code possess uh, the human gene, which code for a blood clotting factor. So blood uh, the this blood coagulation factor found in the goat meat and can be purified and used to treat hemophilic patient. So, uh, seperti yang kita belajar sebelum ni, hemofilia, pesakit-pesakit hemofilia uh, gagal mem, mem, melakukan pembekuan darah. Jadi, uh, GMO, uh, kambing yang GMO ni telah diubah eh, genetik dia, dia mempunyai, eh, kambing ini mempunyai uh, gen yang ada, yang ada genetik pembekuan darah. Jadi apabila uh, genetik pembukuan darah ni akan ada di dalam susu kambing ni. Jadi susu kambing tu akan diproses dan boleh diminum oleh pesakit hemofilia. Okay. This genetically modified cow okay, will uh, produce milk which does not contain beta lactoglobulin. Okay. Beta lactoglobulin ni is a type of protein that cause allergy among uh, some children. Okay. Jadi uh, GMO cow ni uh, susu yang dihasilkan oleh GM, uh, GMO uh, lembu GMO ini tidak mengandungi beta uh, lactoglobulin. Okey, uh, beta lactoglobulin ni boleh menyebabkan alergi kepada susu lembu. So genetically modified organisms are organism that contain recombinant DNA. So, recombinant DNA technology enable production of new genes combination. 
So the organism that contain recombinant DNA is also known as transgenic organism. Okay, so now we discuss about the GMF or genetically modified food. So this is the picture of top 10 GMF. Acorn, soy, cotton, papaya, rice, peas, dairy product, tomato, potato and uh, canola. Okay, recombinant DNA technology has successfully produced many beneficial variety of crops and livestock. So GMO or GMF possess DNA from other species of plant or animal. Consumption of GMF by human may cause health implications uh, which are still unknown. So the characteristic of GMF are resistant to herbicide, resistant to disease, application in medicines, tolerance to heavy metal and resistant to pests. Okay, jadi GMF ni adalah um, contoh uh, apa teknologi rekombinasi DNA yang berjaya dihasilkan. Jadi uh, selalunya mengandungi DNA daripada plant, uh, daripada tumbuh-tumbuhan yang lain ataupun uh, haiwan yang lain. Uh, Pengambilan GMF ni untuk manusia mungkin akan menyebabkan uh, implikasi kepada kesihatan tetapi masih belum didapat uh, kajian yang terperinci. So, uh, so let's discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of GMF. Okay, first advantages. Okay, of, of, uh, overcome worldwide food shortage by producing high quality transgenic crop and livestock. Okay, reduce costs for food production, increase nutritional value of crops, reduce problem of crop related to pests, reduce usage of pesticide, and the last one is increase in production, reduce price of food, thus increase food availability. Okay, jadi kelebihan GMF ni boleh mengatasi masalah kekurangan makanan yang kekurangan makanan, sumber makanan di dunia ni dengan menghasilkan makanan yang berkualiti tinggi. Jadi dia akan mengurangkan kos penghasilan pemakanan dan antara kelebihan GMF adalah boleh menambahkan nilai nutrisi pada makanan itu okay, dan akan mengurangkan uh, masalah uh, berkaitan dengan uh, perosak, okay, serangga perosak dan akan mengurangkan penggunaan racun serangga perosak. Jadi uh, dia uh, apabila penambahan uh, a produk ya, yang dihasilkan dia akan mengurangkan harga makanan. So dia akan menambahkan lagi uh, bekalan makanan. This advantage of GMF endangered natural species. Uh, there is a slight possibility that the foreign gene in GMF may be transferred to human. For example, antibiotic resistant genes and may have adverse effect on health and in genetic material. Jadi uh, ini adalah uh, keburukan GMF eh, dia akan merosak ataupun mem memupuskan okay, uh, spesies yang semula jadi dan mungkin akan ada uh, kemungkinan okay, uh, gen yang asing akan transfer, akan dimasukkan ke dalam manusia contohnya uh, genetik untuk anti, uh, resistant kepada antibiotik dan juga mungkin ada kesan kepada kesihatan manusia. So, this is how uh, to know your uh, the product, okay? So the label of product, okay, of genetically modified, uh, it start with uh, five digits starting with eight, number eight. Organic is starting with number nine, and commercially grown is starting with number four. So, uh, you have you have the right. Uh, to choose your product. Okay, so this is the uh, example of 
recombinant DNA technology. Okay, a bacillus thuringiensis gene is inserted into the corn to increase its resistance against insect pests. So later we will discuss more uh, in thirteen point two. Okay, so B BT uh, bacillus thuringiensis is called BT genes. Okay, BT genes uh, in insert into the crop such as corn. So when the pest eat the corn, uh, so the pest will die. Okay, it is uh, this is because uh, the the gene that produce from BT we uh, the BT or bacillus thuringiensis will produce uh, toxin, okay? We secret toxin. Eh? It's a type of soil bacteria that secret toxin. So, okay. Jadi, um, apabila uh, BT gen dimasukkan ke dalam uh, jagung, okay, dalam DNA jagung ni, so apabila um, serangga perosak nak makan BT corn ni, Ataupun jagung BT So dia akan mati Sebab uh, BT ni Ataupun Bacillus thuringiensis ini Adalah sejenis uh, Bakteria tanah Yang akan menghasilkan Toksi Okay So this is another example Of uh, GMF Okay, super salmon. Okay, super salmon is genetically modified fish, which is approved by the Food and Drug Administration (FDA) as a safe food for consumption in uh, United States of America and Canada. It is modified by inserting a growth hormone gene from a Chinook salmon into the genome of an Atlantic salmon. Okay, hence a super salmon is created, which grow. Uh, at a faster rate and can be produced throughout the year. Okay, so look at to the picture. Uh, so this is the length of salmon at uh, eight month. So this is super salmon. Eh? Super salmon is more larger eh, in size. Okay, uh, so super salmon ni dihasilkan daripada uh, ni lah um, GMF ataupun GMO. Okay. Dia telah masukkan uh, hormon uh, tu besaran daripada spesies Chinook salmon Dia masuk ke dalam Atlantic salmon Okay, next is uh, potato So this is the effect of frost on potato Potato is an important crop to people who live in cold climate But it is uh, very sensitive to low temperature and frost So to overcome this problem, a gene from Arabidopsis species plant, which enables the plant to tolerate freezing condition, is inserted into potato genome to create a genetically modified potato that can grow well in cold climate. Jadi, uh, genetik daripada tumbuhan yang dikenali sebagai Arabidopsis ni dimasukkan ke dalam genome Uh, kentang supaya genom uh, supaya kentang boleh uh, uh, apa nama ni me, uh, boleh uh, tumbuh saran yang baik dalam cuaca yang sejuk eh, tidak mengalami keadaan seperti uh, di dalam gambar ni. So this is how the insulin produce eh, by the genetic engineering technique. Okay, insulin is an important hormone which control blood sugar level. So in older days, insulin was extracted from the pancreas of cattle or pigs to treat diabetes mellitus patient. Nowadays, insulin can be commercially produced by genetic engineering for patients with diabetes mellitus. Beside insulin, uh, include uh, beside insulin, the other success of genetic engineering include hepatitis B. A vaccine, blood protein factor, and growth hormone. So this is how the uh, production of insulin. Okay, uh, use a, a split human DNA with insulin gene. Okay, so insulin gene is cut with the restricted enzyme. So this is the insulin gene, and then we use the vector. So the vector is bacteria. 
uh, we take out the plasmid of the circular DNA from in the bacteria used as a cloning vector. So the plasmid is also cut with the, using the restrict, restricted enzyme. So a cut plasmid uh, are combined with the insulin, uh, human gene insulin. So it's called a recombinant plasmid. Okay. So a recombinant plasmid here insert into a bacterium. So bacterium has the trans. Uh, is bacteria is called transgenic bacterium. So the bacterium uh, clone, multiply, and to produce insulin. So insulin is extracted from the transgenic bacteria and purified. Okay. So uh, uh, DNA manusia ni yang mengandungi is, uh, genetic insulin akan di uh, diambil dan uh, dicampurkan dengan uh, sejenis enzim untuk memotong insulin genetik insulin kemudian diguna juga bakteria okey um, uh, akan ambil plasmid nama plasmid uh, DNA bakteria uh, bernama plasmid so plasmid juga di, dicampur dengan uh, en, enzim so uh, en, uh, plasmid bakteria akan bergabung dengan uh, genetik insulin manusia so dia akan bergabung menjadi uh, recombinant plasmid okey jadi recombinant plasmid ni akan dimasukkan ke dalam bakteria dan bakteria ni akan di, dimasukkan dalam bioreactor untuk dia membahagi eh, membahagi uh, dengan banyak dan akan menghasilkan insulin kerana bakteria ni adalah transgenic bakterium okey bakteria transgenic di mana dia ada uh, genetik manusia yang akan produce uh, yang akan menghasilkan insulin jadi insulin akan uh, di extract eh daripada bakteria tersebut Okay, with that, thank you.